Well, good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful summer day. Woo! Getting sick of this rain, but, you know, it's one of those gifts from God. We can celebrate it, even if we're a little sick of it. I'm so glad we can come together this morning uh, to worship God, to sing together, and to hear that we are loved and forgiven. We'll have to compete with the rain, apparently, but that's okay. So let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin as we begin every day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and will join in singing our call to worship. Dancing in the rain, catching rays on the deck, pulling weeds in the garden, greeting friends at work. Wherever we are, at home, on vacation, in the car, nestled into a favorite chair, Jesus meets us there. Jesus meets us to listen to our stories, to heal our distresses, to forgive our sins, to offer us new life. Let us bring our concerns to the one who scatters seeds within, around, and among us. Everlasting God, you know us better than we know ourselves. You hear the thoughts within us. You see the times we hesitate to help someone in need. You hear the angry words and grieve the ways we treat unfamiliar people. And yet, Lord Jesus, You invite us to see something more. You plant seeds and talk about tomorrow. You welcome the sick, the disabled, the outcast, those with insecurities. You summon us to see a bigger vision. You start where we are. When we are sweltering in the heat of summer, you offer us cool, refreshing nourishment. When we are burdened by challenges, You invite us to take a deep breath. When we are flooded with disappointments, you germinate a new idea. In our bewilderments, you come and inspire us. Lord, forgive us. Forgive our lack of trust in you. It is not when we get things right, but when we are dead wrong. It's not when we play by the rules, but when we break someone's heart. It's not if we're all cleaned up and looking good, but when we are miserable and broken, that Jesus Christ comes to us. Jesus died for us. You, me, we are all forgiven. This is the great news. This is cause for celebration. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. We'll join in our hymn of praise.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to welcome those around you to worship with a high five, a handshake, a hug, a sign of peace from Christ, whatever it may be. before moved by the sound of his voice and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard and through it all through it all my eyes are on you and through it all through And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. And far be it from me to not believe, even when.
I'd like to welcome the kids forward for a children's message. Do we have any kids coming up? <laughs> ah. What's up, dude? How's it going? Can I get a high five? Yeah. Hey, Noah. Well, oh, here's, here comes a couple more. Hey, you guys. So, did you guys hear that song? Wasn't that nice? That was really good, right? Well, I really like that song because it's based on one of my favorite hymns of all time. It's based on this one. When peace like a river. So, the words to this song. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Do you guys know what that means? I was really hoping one of you could explain it to me. They're really weird words, right? When peace like a river attendeth my way? I don't know what that means. It's kind of confusing. But, actually, it's pretty simple. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. That means that no matter what, God is with us and that it's going to be okay. So even when we're scared or when we're upset or when we're worried about anything, it is well with our souls because we know that God is with us. So let's say a quick word of prayer. So repeat after me. Holy God, thank you for being with us. Help us to have courage and help us to know you are with us. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Our first reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. You'll find it printed in your worship bulletin and projected on the wall. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in, the generous, in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving you my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be fair balance. As it is written, for one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Word of God, word of life. Please stand, if you are able, for the singing of the gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little girl is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he, when he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, uh, I just want to start by saying thank you for letting me come and talk with you. Um, I don't know how many of you know me. Uh, my name is Jarius. I used to be a, le a leader at the synagogue. I worked there for about 40 years. Um, I was mostly in charge of like day-to-day -day operations, uh, scheduling things there. I, I helped with uh, some sacrifices, organizing things around the synagogue. Um, but that's, that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I have a story to tell. Uh, about 13, 14 years ago, my wife and I had a little baby girl. And she was the most precious thing I had ever seen. She was the most important thing to me. But she was born with a disease. I didn't know what it was, but it made her frail and kind of weak. Uh, she couldn't really run. She couldn't really do too much. And so we, we went everywhere. We went to uh, my colleagues at the synagogue, thinking that some of them would be able to figure it out. They had never seen it before. So we went to the temple in Jerusalem, 
and we talked with the temple physicians and with the high priest, and they had never seen it before. We talked with the best doctors all throughout the Roman Empire, but they had never seen this disease before. They didn't know what it was, but they knew it was killing her. So, I kept working, I kept looking, I kept seeking out any option. I went to medicine men, I went to tribal leaders, I went to absolutely anybody I could find. But nobody knew what to do. And then, when she was about 12, I started hearing rumblings about this guy. This guy walking through, uh, through Nazareth, and if the stories were true, he had done some pretty incredible things. He had a large group following with him, um, and he was teaching some pretty interesting things. See, the only reason I had heard about this guy was because people were coming in to the synagogue to complain about him. They were saying he was teaching all of these, these heretical things, and I understood that, but he was doing something, something that I, I hadn't seen before. So, one day I heard he was coming to town, and I got excited. This might be the guy who could do something for my daughter. I, I was really excited to see him, but at the same time, I knew what it meant. If the people from the synagogue saw me there, my career would be over. If the people from the community saw me talking with this heretic, I'd be basically kicked out of the community where I was raised, where I worked, where I lived, where I met my wife, where my daughter lived. I knew I would be kicked out, but I, I had to do something. So, the day finally came, this guy came into town, and I went to talk to him. So I walked, I didn't actually walk up to him, I, I kind of crawled up to him. I, I was so nervous. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. It was like up in my throat, and, and I didn't know what was going to happen. But there was an opportunity here. So I crawled up to this guy and I said, you don't know me, I don't know you, but my daughter is dying. Is there something you can do? And he looked down at me and he grabbed my hand and he picked me up out of the dirt and he said, show me the way. I, I, I didn't know what to do with that. I, I thought it would take convincing. I thought he would need to know I'm someone important in the community. But he just picked me up and followed me. So we started walking. And, you know, it was me and this guy Jesus. And, like, he had students walking with him. And then there was this even larger group walking behind and they kept kind of inching closer and closer because they all wanted to hear every single word that this guy had to say. They were all really interested in what their teacher was talking about. So we got into town and we got to basically the street where I live. I mean, it's about a mile away from home, but it was just a straight shot. But this was the part I was dreading the most, because this is where the priest lived, this is where the governor lived, this is where 
everybody who was somebody lived. And they were going to see me. But I, I reminded myself it's about my daughter. And I heard people shouting for Jesus. I heard people shouting at Jesus. I heard a lot of people shouting at me. But we were on our way and something was going to happen. Something was going to happen. So as we walked down this street, the crowd kind of pressed in. We were pushed together. We were uh, pushed in on each other. And out of nowhere, this Jesus guy just stops, dead in his track, and says, who touched me? Everybody around is just staring at him, thinking, what are you talking about? We've been walking with you this whole time. We've been right here. Everybody is pressing up against you. How are you confused about this? We have to go. But he wouldn't let it go. He just stopped and stayed and looked around and tried to figure out who had touched his cloak. What a waste of time. My daughter is at home. My wife is sitting at her bedside. Can't we just go? So it turns out that there was a woman uh, who had touched his cloak. I didn't know who she was. She had never been to the synagogue because she had an unclean disease. So we never would have let her in. So I didn't know who she was. I didn't know her story. And I didn't care. I wanted to get back to my daughter. And as Jesus was talking to this woman, she was, she was fine now. I, get, I, I didn't really know what was going on because that's when it happened. My friends who were back at the house with my wife, They came up to me and said that this is a waste of time. My daughter was dead. So there I am, on the ground for the second time today. This time I'm crying. I had no idea what to do. If we had just kept walking, if Jesus hadn't stopped, we would have been there. I would have been with my wife. I could have held her hand so she, so she wasn't alone when it happened. So Jesus walks over, again grabs me by the hand, lifts me out of the dirt, looks me right in the eye and says, don't be afraid. Just believe. I don't think he knew what that meant. I'd been afraid for the last 12 years. I had been worried about this very day for 12 years. But something in his voice, something in his voice made me think that there was something that could happen. So I'm still basically out of it. I have no idea what's going on. But Jesus is dragging me by the hand to my own house. I'm barely getting one foot in front of the other until we get about a block away. And that's when I hear my wife. I hear her crying. I hear her screaming. I should have been there. I should have been there with her. If we hadn't stopped, I would have been there. So Jesus pulls me into the house, and it hurts. It hurts to be there, but I'm finally back with my wife. And 
and Jesus starts making fun of us. We're sitting in this room crying, screaming at what has happened, and he says, what are you worried about? She's just sleeping. In that moment, I hated him. I hated him for what he was doing to me and my wife. I couldn't believe he would say that. I didn't know what was going on. Then he starts talking again. Not to me. Not to my wife. Not to his friends that he brought along. But to my daughter. He looks at her, grabs her by the hand, and says two words. Talitha kum. Little girl, get up. And she does. She gets up. My little girl, for the first time in weeks, sits up in bed. There I am again, on the ground. This time, crying tears of joy. (laughs) This man, this man saw my whole life crumble. And he put it back together. (sighs) He left before I could say thank you. But I've been... I've been following him now. I've been following him for about a year. Because this is something special. For years, I worked in the synagogue waiting for something to happen. We have promises of a Messiah. Promises of a king who would come. A a king who would be God with us. And he's here. He brought my life back together again. He took that brokenness and made it whole. So I've been following him and talking with groups and I want to share this story. Because we all have stories. We all have these stories to share. They're not all like this. But I'm sure that we have stories to share. So I want you to share those with those around you. I want you to share those stories so that people can know the love that God has for you and the love that God has for them and the love that God has for this world that God would come to us. I never know how to end these talks, so let's just say a word of prayer. Blessed are you, O God, creator of the universe. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Ha Sholam. Blessed are you, O God, for sending us uh, this, this Jesus, this healer, this Messiah. Help us to live in the way that he lives. Help us to to follow him and to share the story of him. And help us to reach out to those around us so that we can heal this broken world. Amen.
Please join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of our Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Growing in faith and discipleship, we give thanks for God's merciful compassion as we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, healer of our every ill, you give us courage to face what is ahead. You give us strength to continue on our journey. You give us community to support us in times of strife. Let your spirit be a wellspring of hope for our past, our present, and our future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, all creation is a gift from you, and we are the caretakers of that creation. But we have failed. We have polluted rivers. We have ravaged forests. We have exterminated creatures. Forgive us and reform us into stewards of your lands for the sake of ourselves and future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Liberating God, soften the hearts of rulers and governments. Strengthen the voices of those who cry out for freedom and opportunity for the overlooked, the oppressed, and the abused. Give peace to our nation and to our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of unity, this week we celebrate the United States of America and all that entails. Use our celebration as a reminder of our common goals of equality, freedom, justice, and peace. Unite the right and the left, the rich and the poor, the weak and the strong. Bring us together to share your love with all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, <clears throat> give us faith to make us whole. Ease the anxiety of undiagnosis or chronic illness. Soothe the heartache of miscarriage or infertility. Look with compassion on all who cry to you for healing. We pray especially for Sharon Hulkey, Bill and Sharon Hansen, Micah Anderson, Carl Enk, Dean Tesmer, Roger Juleen, Dave Gansky, Jean Haynes, Carol Forsberg, Tom Postel, Charlotte Anderson, Bob Syme, Arlene Bierbaum, Diane Miller, and Chris Cook. We also lift up those that we name now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift these, these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we give back to God what was first given to us.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We'll now join in singing the words of institution. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Union will be served in the traditional way. Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. So for announcements, uh, we've got movie night coming up. Woo! Adult ministry team is organizing a movie night. We have uh, voting out there. You can vote for Wonder, uh, The Greatest Showman, or The Greatest Movie of All I'm Inside Out. I'm just saying. It's going to win. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, so we'll have voting out there up until uh, next Sunday is when we'll announce who won and what movie we're watching. But to be honest, they're all going to be great movies, and they'll be a fun time. So that will be happening on July 10th. Um, we also have a little note in the uh, grab-and-go about the Green Lake quilt. It's that beautiful quilt out in the social hall, so you can read a little more about that. Uh, another thing, right by that lovely voting table is our sign-up table. Woohoo! We're always looking for more people to help in worship, and a big thank you to those who uh, volunteered for this week. Uh, we were a, p a couple people short, and we sent around a couple of emails, and people stepped up, so thank you. Um, 
So yes, please take a look at that volunteer, or those volunteer sheets out there and see when you can help. Um, we also have this announcement. We didn't get it into the bulletin, but there, uh, there is a Lutheran refugee group that uh, helps to uh, house children who have been separated from their parents. Um, it sounds strange that we would fundraise for something like that, but this is a place where we know that children can be safe, uh, where they can be loved, and that they will be reunited with their parents. The Lutheran Refugee Service does a great job of cataloging and making sure that these kids won't be apart from their parents for too long. So in the midst of a difficult situation, if you're looking uh, for a place to donate, that's uh, one of the places you can. I think if you go to the next slide. Yeah, there's the rest of it. Um, Lears is what it is. Uh, so there, uh, there's uh, the ads, and if you would like to donate, you can go online and uh, look for the Lutheran uh, Immigration Refugee Services, I believe is what it's called, yes. Uh, so please take a look at doing that. Um, and I think that's all I have other than have a great fourth. Enjoy your time and get out to the lake or out to somewhere with air conditioning or out of the rain or wherever. Uh, just get out and celebrate. So with that being said, I invite you to stand as you are able to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing our sending hymn, and we do have instruments. Come on up and grab some. I'm looking at confirmation age kids. I'm looking at kids at heart. Come on. Which one do you want? Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.